Hey, what's up? It's Sergey Ivanov, and I, I finally caved in, and I'm doing a podcast now. You will not believe how many people have requested me to do a podcast. And I don't know why, because I'm not the best public speaker. So I don't know where they got the idea that I could, you know, hold a entire show all by myself. I mean, that's what I do anyway, but I mean, this is what I like to call the sound of Sergey. It's the best title that kind of made sense. If you don't like it, then guess what? You don't have to watch this show. Um, that coffee's awful. It's like Aldi. It's like the stuff you get at Aldi, like on clearance. All right. <clears throat> cough, cough. All right. May 21st. Yeah, I'm done. By the way, I can't be the only one who's starting to think that this is just a conspiracy. The whole, I mean, the whole thing. I can't be the only one. Because, you know, the dude from, like, was it the the who or whatever like who who basically is paid by china like they won't even acknowledge that taiwan exists and i bring this up to my family and they look at me like i'm like i'm insane like i'm out of my mind like i, I literally but here's what you do if you're a conspiracy theorist and you want to test out if someone's gonna objectively listen to you bring up jeffrey epstein and if you tell them all the evidence on jeffrey epstein and they still believe that that was just all coincidence then just don't even bother because they don't listen to anything they're dead set in their belief i brought up that to the world health organization i brought that up to my family like like a month ago or however many i or, i forgot what i brought it up like oh you're crazy that's dumb that's just a conspiracy theory but the second Fox News starts talking about it, oh my gosh, they're basically in bed with China. It's it, it, it's all coming out. It's like, hmm, maybe I said that like two weeks ago. Like this happened to me when I was a freshman. When I was a freshman, when start was when stuff was really starting to go downhill with like Venezuela back in the day. You remember that? Like when they first started to go socialist. And it started to get really bad. I was an AP, uh, what was it? human? Ge I was an AP human geography, Mr. Brzezinski. And we were talking about, um, I forgot what we were talking about, but I bring up the thing about, you know, in Venezuela, they're so starving that they're having to eat dogs, which is a real thing. And everyone, including Mr. Brzezinski, he was like, oh, that's just a conspiracy theory. Oh, you have no source for that. Two weeks later, dude, Venezuela's in such a bad shape from socialism that they're having to eat dogs and cats. And I'm like, maybe it's almost like I said that a while ago, but you wouldn't listen. You know what I mean? I know I have to be quiet because half the people in this house are, it's 1 p.m. and people are still asleep in this house. Pathetic. Anyway, I took the AP uh, Lang test yesterday. And if you want to spend $90 to hate yourself and life and education and America, you should take the AP exam. And I'll tell you why. From the start, I've never been a big fan of AP. I think it's just a dumb corporation to, that wants to take your money and... So, like, here's what it is. They say that, like, APO oh, helps you get through college. And it's like, if you look at it, no, it doesn't. It does not help you get through college. Because you're going to have to take those classes again. You're going to have to take the same classes twice. It's just, why would you do it? And then the worst reason is you want to take the AP classes to be valedictorian, which is, like, wh what is that? It's a, it's just a name? That literally matters zero on what college you get into and what job you get. I promise you. If you're a valedictorian, it does... Oh, that was disgusting. Sorry. Um, if you're a valedictorian, it doesn't matter what college you go to, what job. They don't care if you're valedictorian. They care if you're going to work hard. Don't take the AP exam. Here's... 
Am I supposed to be saying this? I don't care. I hate him anyway. Um, so what? first thing, the, the thing from the start was broken. To test out your keyboard, they gave you like a paragraph to write out. But they give you like 598 characters to type it out. And that doesn't... That isn't enough for the whole phrase that you have to type out. The first thing you do is already broken. And I asked my teacher, I asked Ms. Scheidel, hey, is this normal? And she goes, yeah, that's what everyone said. Uh, 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 yeah, just move on. Just don't worry about it. I'm sure they'll fix it. The first thing that you do is messed up. I spent, well, I didn't spend, thank goodness, my mom spent. $90 were spent to take a test that was broken on question one. That is why you don't take AP exams. It's even worse if you do it in person. Oh my goodness. Oh my, oh gosh, don't. It's even worse. It was fine this year because Corona, you have to stay at home and no one's in school and you have to take it by yourself on your computer. And that's what I did. It was only one, like, uh, like type a short a couple paragraphs about what you think about this. That was easy enough. That was fine. Kind of. Um, normally, there's like three sections. You have to do what we did, then do a longer version, then like answer multiple choice. And here's the thing about AP Lang. AP Lang is by far the dumbest AP class I've taken in my life. Freshman year, I took AP Human Geography. Sophomore, it was AP uh, World Hist yeah World History. This year, I took AP Lang. It's the most useless class you could ever take in your life. You literally just talk about speeches the whole. And here's what's here's what's just ridiculous about AP Lang above anything else. Half the stuff that you analyze in AP Lang, half the stuff is was not even meant to be read by anyone except like one dude. Then on top, half the stuff wasn't even meant to be read at all. It was, it was, it was meant to be like speeches that were like given on TV or something. Half the stuff wasn't even, half the stuff, we just get transcripts and like, oh, analyze this. You're missing 80% of what the whole thing was about. 80% of a speech is how you deliver it, the body language, tone, all of that. 20% is what's written. 90% of these people don't even write their own speeches. Like we're reading George Bush's 9-11 speech. He didn't write that thing. Look at him like in press conferences versus that speech. It's a whole different person. None of these people are writing these speeches. 80% of the time, it's not even meant to be analyzed as deeply as you're analyzing it in that class. It's the most ridiculous class I've ever taken. No, you know what you know what the funniest part of that whole thing was? <sighs> the funniest part about that whole thing was we were doing a unit on satire. And I was like, alright, I I know this world, you know, uh humor, comedy. This is in my ballpark. I know what this is about. And to talk about satire, she literally brings up National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yeah. That's her gleaming example of satire. Right there. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It's like, there's been decades of great political, economic, whatever satire you want that is perfect and school appropriate. So don't give me into that junk where it's like, oh, I can't show South Park because it's not school appropriate. Just show something else. You don't have to show, you know, South Park. You don't have to show, you know, the Book of Mormon. Just go and show something that works and is a good example of what you're talking about. Oh my goodness. 
I mean, the teacher, Michelle, she was a saint. She was the nicest lady ever. But she was still stuck in like 16-year-old white girl times. <laughs> She's the nicest lady. Great teacher. But if you like gave me an audio clip of her having a conversation and told me, this is a 17-year-old, one of your peers, white girl going to Starbucks, I'd be like, yeah, that is exactly who it is. I would buy it every time. So anyway, the AP exam. <laughs> Here's the thing. Oh, the dumb, I had an argument with my friend about the AP exam the night before, because I was talking to him and like we're on Discord and we're talking and he goes, have you studied much for the AP exam? And I go, absolutely not. And he goes, oh, I've been studying nonstop. And I go, why? Why have you been studying? And he goes, I don't want to waste $90, man. It's like, dude, if you get 110% on the AP exam, you're wasting the $90. It's not going to be useful. They literally just want to take your money. You're taking it online. It's one third of what it would normally be. Yet it's still 90 bucks. They're still keeping all that money. Keep that in mind, by the way. Like, in what realm is that what you do? Like, in what realm is it you pay $90 for, you know, a, a three-course meal at a restaurant? Hey, sorry, circumstances happened, but we're going to keep your money and you get the appetizer. That's what the AP exam was. I literally had $90 taken away from my family. So I could take one third of the test it was and don't even it wasn't even printed on paper. So you can't say that it was shipping costs or printing costs or counting any of that stuff. None of that applies. So why is it still $90 for me to take the AP exam if I get one third of the test? It shouldn't even be $90 to begin with. It's a junk test. It has no bearing on actual life. The impact it has is on stuff that doesn't matter at all. Anyway, I'm 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 getting I'm getting carried away. I'm sorry. This is what happens when you put a Russian behind a microphone. He just yells. I've been told I'm really loud. Like I walked into class one time. I'm just talking to Nate. I'm talking to my friend Nate. We're next to each other. I'm just minding my own business. And this freaking drama two kid, like this drama chick, she walks in and goes, Sergey, you're so loud. Like I'm supposed, like this is supposed to be like, she, she said it like she's trying to wake me up and like realize the error of my ways because I speak in a tone of voice that's louder than what you would speak in. <laughs> the funny part is that girl that I'm talking about has the most obnoxious voice possibly in that whole class. <laughs> like when she walked in, she literally sounded like, Sergey, oh my gosh, you're so loud. That's what she sounded like the whole time. <sighs> anyway, about that argument. I was having an argument with my friend, and he goes, I need to I need to study so I can get a good grade on the AP exam. And I go, Why? Why is that important? And he's like, cause college or job or whatever. And it's like, what job? that you should work for. I don't mean that you want, but what job should you work for? Like, what should you, like, is, if the job or college requires that you get just, you have to get the score that we like on the ACT or whatever, job, whatever. If, the, if your job requires you to do that, here's a thought. Maybe don't work for those guys. 
because they don't care about you. They care about their bottom. They probably don't even care about your grades in the end. They probably just want to thin out the herd as much as possible so they don't have to pay as many people so they can pay you less. That's probably what's going on. I was having, I was, and I was telling this to my friend. He goes, well, yeah, but you're a filmmaker, so that doesn't count. The filmmaking isn't a real job. A real career is something that you can get promoted for and respectable, honorable, real jobs you need to get a college degree for. I'm like, yeah, tell that to a fireman. Respectable jobs require college degree. Tell that to the police officers. I go, if, if the only respectable jobs in the world require a college degree, then why is it that 70% of the jobs on this planet don't require you to get a college degree? Look that up. That's a real statistic. It's probably higher. 70% <clears throat> of jobs don't require you to get a college degree. And you're sitting here telling me that only respectable jobs are jobs where you can get promoted and or you go to college for. And it's like, yeah, if you're gonna be a lawyer or a doctor, yeah, if you're gonna be cutting into my face, please go to college, I would prefer that. But if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna be the guy that, you know, runs a bed and breakfast, you don't need to go to college. My uncle has like six businesses. He literally gets gold bars from India. This is a true story. We're at Thanksgiving. He straight up just gets a 10 ounce, 24 karat gold bar in the mail from some dude in India. He has six jobs. Like he has a bed and breakfast. He sells raccoon skins. He, uh, he sells Christmas trees. He sells coyote pee to hunters, like as a scent. You don't, 70% of jobs, 70% of jobs don't require a college degree. You wanna know what's really insane? Sorry, the recording pause. You wanna know what's really, like, this like blew my mind. And this is kind of related to that. I was in, AP world history last year and you know the teacher does the thing that all the teachers do and it's like what's your dream job where do you want to go to college what do you want to do for the rest of your life like where do you see yourself and like basically get to know you and like we literally went around the room row by row and he asked what job do you want 100% of the females wanted to do something in the medical field Without exception, every last one of those girls wanted to be some sort of doctor or some sort of something in the medical field. Every single one of them. I don't know what that says about anything. That's just a weird thing. 100% of the, like if that was the poll, that would literally say, like in statistics, 100% of women want to be doctors. Obviously that's not the case, but for that class, 100% of the females in that class wanted to be a doctor. I don't know. Anyway. <sighs> Point is don't take AP. <laughs> and here's the thing about AP. They're so pretentious about themselves. They're so, it's such, it's a bigger deal than the ACT at times. Literally half of AP classes, like the, like you take it for two semesters. First semester is actually learning stuff. The second semester is literally nothing but, hey, how do you take, how do you succeed on this test? This is, and it's like, this is the real world. Who cares about a test? It's like, what we literally judge someone's whole life, like, especially with the ACT. We literally judge someone's whole life ability to get into college, get a job, and their whole life worth based on one test that they took when they were like 16. Like, they're not even old enough to vote. 
and you're going to judge them on their ability to function in life based on one test that they took. They're not even able to vote by that time. Like the age of consent in America is 18. And you're going to tell me that one test that you take when you're 16 or 17, that's going to be what judges your merit for the rest of your existence in the educational and career world. What on earth is that? That's insane. I got to be careful. The wire is going to come out of this microphone sometime soon. If you can't tell, I'm sort of anti-establishment. <laughs> um, all of that is just such junk. And I tell people all the time, uh, just like jobs just to not get. Like any, any job that you're not going to, that... I hear people say this all the time, and it literally saddens me. My my friends will work at like a grocery store, bagging groceries, and like, oh, it sucks. I hate it. Well, you know, you got to make money somehow. And it's like, no. Make money in a job that you like. You don't have to just settle for whatever is the most easy way out, because that's what you're doing. You're just going for the easy way out. And the thing that's sad is once you go for the easy way out the first time, it pays terribly. It's You're basically slaving away for the bigger man, for the big corporations like Kroger, whatever, Walmart. You're slaving away for them. They barely give you anything. It's a terrible job. But the thing is you can't leave the job. If you finally get the sense to leave, you can't leave because they're paying you such crap anyway that you don't have the means to leave and actually get a good job. So then you get stuck in that job, in that world for the rest of your career. That's what's sad about it. Like I literally have, like one of my friends, Jeremiah, he says, I'm gonna work at banks. And I go, I've heard, and listen, banks in, in our town has the worst reputation among all the grocery stores for treating their employees terribly. It's the worst of all of them. Like if it's the one place you don't want to work at, it's at banks. My friend Jeremiah, he goes, I'm going to work at banks. And I go, dude, that's a terrible job. No one likes it. And he goes, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I know the people. They're going to treat me right. One week later, quits the job. And I go, hey, why'd you quit the job? And he's like, oh, it's a terrible job. And I say, like, huh, I want, it's almost like I told you. But I'm glad for him. He had the sense to quit while he was ahead. What I'm basically trying to tell you is don't settle. Don't just settle for the easy way out because that's what 99% of people, at least in America, are doing. They're just settling for the easy way out. Why do you think so many people are trying to be doctors? And that's not even the easy way out. If you actually look into it, that's one of the hardest jobs in the world. And no, it's not actually a well-paying job. The reason why doctors are so rich is because they're getting paid off by like the CDC and the World Health Organization to say that sh sugar is fine and it's like saturated fats causing heart disease when in reality it's the sugar companies they're paying off the doctors to to blame saturated fat and they're paying them off and that's how they're getting their money paying them off to to push the narrative that they want that's how doctors make you know 200 grand a year and are living in giant houses that's that's how they're making their money. They're not making their money because it's a high paying job. It's a terrible job. Look at, you know, what's it called? Uh, it's like whenever you do college and like you're training to be a, a doctor, you get two hours of sleep a night. There was a dude I heard on like some podcast. He was training to be a doctor. And he was literally on the toilet, taking a dump, eating food, and sleeping at the same time, all at once. Because that's how little time he had training to be a doctor. Why would you do that job? 
half the pe- and half the people who want like I brought up in that class, half the people who want to be doctors don't want to do it because they want to save lives. They want to do it because oh, doctors make lots of money. Well, no, they don't. They make lots of money if they're paid off to push you know, to push that you know this is causing you know obesity. They're getting paid off to push prescription drugs. They're getting paid off to push Accutane. I literally, I had acne. I had a really bad acne for the longest. I have bad acne now, but it was really bad when I was like in sixth, seventh grade. It was the worst then. I had this doctor, won't say his name. But the first time I walk in and I go, I have bad acne. The first thing, before he ever goes, hey, try this, you know, cleanser try this soap try this you know toner try this you know topical face mask the first thing he takes one look and goes you know i think accutane would really be for you and it's like dude that stuff makes you shoot up schools i'm not gonna take accutane like that was the first thing he suggested and we were very adamant no i'm not gonna take accutane because i had a friend he said that If he killed his grandma, he would feel no remorse. And that was all because of the Accutane. 100%. He literally did not feel emotions. It's like, yeah, I'm going to pass on that one. Literally turning into a living psychopath or having less acne. Yeah, I'm going to choose having acne. That's a pretty clear choice to me. But then you know what? The second we go to like some independent, not like independent, but like smaller one who's not getting paid off like with like by big businesses, the, we went like 15 different, 15 different, you know, face masks. Every, not once did this lady go, I need you to try Accutane. Not once. In fact, she literally told us, normally I would take Accutane, but you're a family friend. I'm going to warn you not to take it. That's a phone ringing. (laughs) But, like, I see a psychologist, like, once every six months. Just like, just like, and I think everyone should do that. And this was at a time when we were debating, should I take Accutane? So we go to this guy, Dr. Kaplan, we go, we're thinking about taking Accutane. And he goes, I would only feel comfortable if you take Accutane, if you are able to have meetings with me at least once a week. And I go, yeah, no. Okay, that is, that's all I needed. Literally, psychologist. A psychologist is saying, if you take Accutane, make sure you have a psychologist at the ready at least once a week, because that's how bad you're going to be. It's like, hey, how about if you have bad acne, stop shoving Snickers bars into your face. Stop eating nice cream and cake and like sandwiches. Those are terrible for you. That's what's causing it. I, you know what? And I stopped eating all the sugar and all that stuff. Crystal clear. Well, not crystal clear, but it was way clear. Way more clear. Anyway, I'm rambling. This podcast is almost 30 minutes long. I don't want to make this too long. You've heard me ramble about just... This is what it's like to be me. <laughs> just one thing leads... I start out talking about the AP test... And by the end, I'm talking about don't take Accutane. That's what happens on the sound of Sergey, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, it's been like 30 minutes. I don't want to make like one of those two-hour podcasts because that's ridiculous. Like maybe if I had someone else, maybe. But not by myself because no one wants to listen to me for 30 minutes. Anyway, this is just a new thing. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. At the very least, this is something that no one can like copy strike me for on YouTube. So that's, at least that's a plus. I didn't want to make a podcast for the longest time. I really didn't. People pressured me from day one saying I should make one. And you know what? I gave in. Here you go. Enjoy. (laughs) Anyway, thank you so much for listening. This has been Sergey Ivanov 
on the sound of Sergei. Thank you very much for watching. Not watching, I'm so stupid. Listening, this is a podcast. I'm so dumb. I'm so stupid.